Good morning now. We'll continue our discussion on the first module of Geotechnical Engineering 1. In the previous set of videos, we had discussed briefly what the major soil deposits in India is, interaction to soil mechanics, how soil is formed, etc. Plus, we moved on to the basic three-phase system diagram, based on which we had discussed what void ratio is, what porosity is, degree of saturation, air content, moisture content, specific gravity, etc. Now in this particular video, we will try to deal with a few relationships between the soil properties which we defined using the three-phase system diagram. But before that, we will try to discuss what density and unit weight is. Now I have written a few terms here, mass, weight, volume, density, and unit weight. Mass, of course, will have a unit of kilograms or grams. Weight will have Newton, where an acceleration is considered. Then you have volume, which can be meter cube or centimeter cube, meter cube being the standard one. Now, based on all these three things, mass, weight, and volume, density of a material will be represented in kilogram per meter cube or gram per cc right likewise unit weight will have kilo newton per meter cube that is written in this table mass will have kilogram unit weight is newton volume will have meter cube density kilogram per meter cube or gram per cc unit weight kilo newton per meter cube so clearly the difference between density and unit weight is mentioned here. Density is mass per volume, whereas unit weight is weight per volume. So based on that, I have written a few sets of terms. Bulk density, number one, is the ratio of total mass of material to the total volume. So that's usually represented by rho. Second one is the dry density, which is the ratio of mass of solids to the total volume. So earlier it was the total mass, now it is a mass of just the solids divided by the total volume. So dry density is usually represented by rho d. Then you have the saturated density. Saturated density is the ratio of mass of saturated soil to the total volume. In the previous video, we had discussed what saturated system is in based on a three-phase system diagram. When you have the entire volume of voids filled by water, and when you don't have air, what you are left with is a saturated density. Right? So that is rho sat, and then you have what is called as a submerged density. Submerged density is the ratio of mass of the submerged soil to the total volume. It's usually represented by rho dash and rho dash is equal to rho saturated minus unit weight of water. Unit weight of water of course is 1 gram per cc or precisely 9.8 kN per meter cube. So I have four terms written here bulk, dry, saturated and submerged. Rho, rho d, rho sat and rho dash. Likewise I have four terms of unit weight as well. Now we said that unit weight is the same idea as that of density but instead of mass weight is considered or unit weight usually represented as gamma is equal to rho into g and of course it's represented in newton per meter cube. So like we discussed rho d, rho set and rho dash we have gamma d, gamma sat, and gamma dash here, which stands for dry unit weight, saturated unit weight, and submerged unit weight, where the relation between unit weight and density is given here as gamma equal to rho into g, and gamma will be usually in newton per meter cube or maybe in kilo newton per meter cube. Now we'll try to see a few basic relationships based on the three-phase system diagram. Number one, 
again just to brush up what three phase system diagram was you have solid soil you have water above that and you have air to the left hand side you have marked volumes and to the right hand side you have masses vs vw and va vw and va put together is called as volume of voids and to the right side we have masses ms mw and ma now based on which we have discussed n porosity is equal to vv by v volume of voids divided by the total volume if i take the reciprocal of that i can write 1 by n is equal to v by vv or i can rewrite the numerator v capital v as the sum of volume of voids and the volume of solids just take a look at the three phase system diagram and you can understand that volume of solids plus volume of voids is equal to total volume so i can write that in the numerator as vo volume of voids plus volume of solids denominator will remain the same vv so i can divide vv by vv and vs by vv what i get is 1 plus vs by vv but we know that vv by vs is void ratio or what i have here is 1 plus reciprocal of voids ratio or 1 plus 1 by e so i have 1 by n is equal to 1 plus 1 by e or i have n is equal to e by 1 plus e or porosity n is represented as e by 1 plus e where e is a voids ratio now this is a very simple equation relation which is based on just the three phase system diagram basic relation number two again based on a three phase system diagram we defined ac air content as va by vv also we had discussed na percentage air voids as va by v so just taking a look at these two terms you can write na is equal to porosity multiplied by ac so this is basic relation number two now moving to the third basic relation i have highlighted three terms here total volume volume of voids and volume of solids in the three phase system diagram if i take volume of solids vs as unity or equal to one unit the highlighted terms gets changed as shown below if i take v as equal to one then voids ratio will be vs by vv i mean vv by vs which is equal to vv likewise i can write vv is equal to voids ratio so this term becomes a voids ratio when this term is equal to one also the total volume in that case will be equal to one plus e so i get a figure like this so when i take v as equal to one vv turns out to be voids ratio and the total volume turns out to be one plus e. now this concept of taking v is equal to one and hence total volume is equal to one plus e will will help us to derive a very basic equation basic relation number three to start with i have rho the density is equal to mass per volume now the mass which is written on the right hand side of the three phase system diagram has three components ms mw and ma so i have numerator is equal to ms plus mw plus ma and denominator is equal to v i can approximately take mass of air as negligible or technically zero so in that case what i'm left with is ms plus mw by volume v let's write that as equation number one or relation number one now in relation number one 
I have two terms ms and mw. ms here can be written as volume multiplied by density or ms is equal to vs into rho s. Volume multiplied by density gives you the mass. But again, we have V as equal to 1. So I can write ms is equal to rho s. Again, we have defined specific gravity G as rho s by rho w in the previous video. So I can write rho s in terms of G as G into rho w. So the long story short, ms is equal to specific gravity multiplied by rho w when I have unit when I have v as equal to 1. Now comes the second term mw. Quite similar to what I've written here, mw will be equal to vw into rho w. I can write vw volume of the water as equal to degree of saturation multiplied by the voids ratio. Think about it. The voids ratio is here. Multiply, by, multiply that by the degree of saturation and what you get is volume of water. So I have mass of water is equal to Se into rho w. So I can write that as relation B. So the story of that particular relation B where you got S is equal to VW is written here, the background. To get the volume of water, we need to calculate the volume of water occupied in the total voids. That is S into VV or S into E in this particular case because voids ratio is equal to VV is equal to E. So I have two things, equation A and equation B. In equation A, I have m is equal to g rho w and in equation B, I have m w is equal to s e into rho w. So quite intuitively, what you have to do is just substitute A and B into equation number 1. So substituting A and B in equation number 1, you get a relation like this. Rho is equal to m w plus m s written as g rho w plus s c rho w by v or g rho w plus s e rho w by 1 plus e because the total volume we have already written that as 1 plus e. So I can have rho w taken outside the bracket and I am left with g plus s c by 1 plus e into rho w. So that finally I get a relation rho or density of soil is equal to a term multiplied by the density of water. So that particular term is G plus SC by 1 plus C. So once you know the specific gravity, voids ratio and degree of saturation, you can find out the density of that soil because the density of water will remain constant usually. So this is a very basic and very important equation based on which you can have three substitutions. Case number one is when the soil is fully saturated or when the water occupies the whole volume of voids. So S is equal to 1 and when you put S is equal to 1 in this equation, you get rho saturated is equal to G plus E by 1 plus E into rho W. Likewise, when S is equal to 0, when you don't have any water there and VA is equal to voids ratio, S is equal to 0. So in this equation, when you substitute S is equal to 0, you get G by 1 plus C into rho W equal to rho D. Likewise, you have submerged unit weight G minus 1 by 1 plus C into rho W. Now submerged unit weight is not, nothing but rho sat minus rho W. So when you subtract rho W from this term, you get this relation. So in short, all these three equations can be derived when you know this particular equation, basic relation number three.